Hello, everyone, and welcome into your CBS in Denver Daily Sports Line. It is Wednesday, October 27th. And I got to be honest with you, we are ice cold. Three losses yesterday. I put faith in the Avs. They did not come through. Really terrible start in that game against Vegas. They lost. And then I had the Nuggets plus seven, and I knew that was a bust once Nikola Jokic went down and was ruled out for the second half. So here's what we do. When I'm struggling, I call in the heavy hitters. I put in a call to my guy, Ben Carey from Capwise. Nice enough to join us today. Ben, it's been a long time since we had you on, man. How you doing? It's a good man. It's a busy time of the year. NBA just started up, of course, college football, NFL, uh, baseball playoffs. So there's a lot going on. Yeah, there certainly is. And I have loved being a member over at Capwise and what you guys do. Your NFL simulations uh, killing it as usual. Let's talk about what we have going on week eight. I want to focus in on the Broncos Ben, three point favorites at home. I don't know about you, but I have no faith in this Broncos team in order to put my hard-earned money on them to show up. However, this does feel like a game where they, they could come out and really the season goes one way or the other depending upon what happens. Yeah, this is a, a huge game from that standpoint because with a loss, I mean, I'm first and foremost shocked that Fangio and Shermer are still here after that Thursday night game losing to Case uh, Keenum of all people, but they're still on the team. So, I mean, we're going to have to uh, obviously include them into this handicap. Having said all that, Michael, I, I do lean with the Broncos at minus three. And here's why uh, Jared Judy is expected to come back. And yeah. that is absolutely going to change this offense because when Hamler went down and Judy went down, there was just no deep threat. And it really set up the Broncos to just have to uh, pass the ball uh, short on, you know, we've seen it on third down. I mean, I think they're last in the league in third down conversions. So now with him back, it stretches the field a little bit. But at the end of the day, we still have Shermer at, as the play caller. So <laughs> it comes down to what he's calling. But I, I do have enough faith in this Broncos team to put up some points. And also this Washington football team ranks near the bottom five in pass defense, which is a little surprising. So it could be a good matchup for a guy like Teddy Bridgewater to uh, put some points on the board through the air. And hopefully he's healthier than 70, 75%, like he said on the radio. Yeah, and it's rare that you say, hey, this could actually be a good matchup for Teddy Bridgewater, given what we've seen uh, the last couple of weeks. But okay, Ben, we'll go Broncos minus three then, if that's where we're leaning uh, here on a Wednesday. Trust me, it's a hard one. It's, it's a hard one to muster up, but I think Judy is – officially announced he's in that line could move back up to three and a half okay so you're saying get on that now good nugget there uh, love that another game you've got your eye on Colts and the Titans Ben we've seen the Titans come away with some really big impressive victories in their last couple of games but now they've got to go to Indy to Indy uh, a team that's been hungry right we saw them uh, in a primetime spot but we also saw this Titans team in a primetime spot play really well yeah. and Henry I mean, he's running over everybody. I think it would take the whole crew at CBS and myself to <laughs> tackle him. I mean, Romy would have to and maybe, get in there. Maybe them not. <laughs> yeah, Romy would have to get in there and try to grab the ankle or something and take him down. That guy is running out of his mind. But this Colts defense is sound. Uh, they have Darius Leonard, who's one of the best linebackers in the NFL. But the biggest thing for me and why I like the Colts here at minus one is Quentin Nelson and Eric Fisher on that offensive line together. They are playing very good football. They're handling defensive ends, defensive interior linemen, and that running game with Jonathan Taylor is really looking good. And yeah. Carson Wentz, I mean, he looked good uh, in that primetime spot, and all you need out of him is just an average game and no turnovers. And this Colts team will be in a position to win, so I like them to beat the Titans, I'm going to say by six points. Wow. Okay. Wow. So you really yeah. like that spread uh, yeah. coming in Colts minus one as it is right now in the over under at 51, but you like the Colts big time in that one. Good to know, I Ben. Uh, I, like I feel it feels like this is a spot where the Titans are going to fall flat on their face. And we've it, seen it them really does. It really this does this year. And after big wins over the bills and the chiefs, I absolutely could see that happening on Sunday. A couple of best bets for you today. Before we let you go, I like the Astros on the money line and the Astros team total over four and a half. That's paying out plus money at plus plus one ten. They hit lefty lefties really well. Um, so don't be surprised if the Astros put up some points after a disappointing game one down there in Houston. Ben, this was fun as always. We'll have you on again soon and uh, keep up the good work at Capwise. Okay. Thanks guys. Go Broncos. 
Hey, that's going to do it for your CBS and Denver Daily Sports Line. We are, as always, brought to you by BetMGM. Place your parlays, props, and futures at the King of Sportsbooks. Download the app today.